Hello biology students! Today we're going to be looking at advanced cellular respiration, learning more, more, more about this topic we learned about last quarter. Okay, let's jump in. So, what kind of organisms do cellular respiration, which we're going to abbreviate CR? We've talked about this before. Hmm, is it just animals that do cellular respiration? No way, Jose! Animals and plants. Actually, all living things need usable energy, or ATP. So it's not just animals and plants, fungi, bacteria. They all do cellular respiration. Protists, too, which we rarely talk about. Everything that's alive needs to do this process. Okay? Let's remind ourselves where this happens. This happens in the mitochondria. And just because we usually forget, let's remind ourselves that a mitochondria is in both plants and animal cells. So plants too, right, have mitochondria. Don't forget the shape of the mitochondria. It has all that kind of squiggly M folds for mitochondria. Now, last time we did cellular respiration, we talked about that there were two types of cellular respiration. One with oxygen, one without oxygen. Okay, and do you remember what they were called? Hmm, what's the one without oxygen called? Anaerobic, right? Because that prefix an means not or without whatever the next thing is. And aerobic is with oxygen. We're going to actually learn a synonym now for anaerobic, which is the word fermentation, which we will actually learn more about in class and even learn some examples of how this process of fermentation is used to make <coughs> yummy foods. And then there's the other one. So if there's something without oxygen that's called anaerobic, what's the one with oxygen called? Aerobic. Okay, but what was the big difference? One had oxygen and one did not. Okay, so that's the big difference. And this is going to really impact how cellular respiration works. And specifically, the job of cellular respiration is create usable form of energy, which is an energy currency or our energy battery. What is our energy battery or usable form of energy? Hmm? ATP. So what we want to see during these notes is how do these two different processes compare with how well they make ATP? Good. So we're going to start with the one that's anaerobic, which we now learned is also called fermentation. No oxygen. Okay. The first step of this process, learning it in depth, is called glycolysis. This process actually never requires oxygen. So it happens definitely during anaerobic respiration. During this step, we are going to be breaking down glucose, or the sugar molecule. And that's what's pictured here. So we have glucose, which actually has six carbons, C6, right? And we're going to karate chop it in half. hi -ya! Okay, and when we do that, which actually an enzyme did that, it releases how many ATP, according to this diagram? Only two. And then it makes some other molecule that you don't need to memorize until you get to, into IV biology, but that's what it's called. All right, so what's this process? Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, actually, not even yet in the mitochondria. And this process will take that one glucose molecule that I described. Remember what's happening to it? Karate chop. Hiya! Breaking in half. And when it does that, how many ATP do we get? Only two. That's kind of lame. Only two ATP? <laughs> That's not that very much, huh? I want a lot. Okay, so, so far, not that much. In reality, guess what? That's all that pretty much happens to make ATP. So how many ATP did we make total again? Just double checking. It was only two? Okay, let's keep moving on. So, in reality, for anaerobic or fermentation, there are two major categories that you need to know about for our class, and one we even did an experiment on. All right? Not this kind, but you do an experiment on this a lot during sports and during uh, gym class, I guess. And this is called lactic acid fermentation. The best example of a creature that does this is you, the human. What happens? Well, during lactic acid fermentation, the cells are not getting enough oxygen. And normally, we need oxygen to make a lot of ATP and to do a really good job at our sports. And guess what happens? If you push yourself really hard at a race or at a game, <laughs> what do you feel like the next day in your muscles? 
sore, right? And that's what's happening in this poor fellow, Ugh, right? He's super sore, and that's because he has a bit of acid, which is called lactic acid, in his muscles, because he worked so hard that he didn't get enough oxygen to all his cells, and that is producing as a byproduct. Man. So, pretty interesting. Can you survive on only lactic acid fermentation? No, right? <gasps> you hold your breath, you're not going to do so well. Don't hold your breath. And really, we can't really work that much on that lactic acid. We also learned about a type called alcoholic fermentation. And specifically, we learned that a creature called yeast, which is a fungus, does this process. Hmm, what process did we learn about? About food and yeast, huh? What did we do? Hmm, we made bread, remember? All right, so really what happens is in this process, the yeast will produce a little bit of alcohol and a little bit of carbon dioxide. That alcohol, when you cook bread enough, it'll burn off. Right, that's actually what makes bread smell good. And what actually causes the bread to rise? The carbon dioxide, right? Very cool. So we've actually done this a little bit. I might bring in some other examples, right? But definitely not some of these examples, okay? So yeast makes bread. It also is in charge of making some alcoholic beverages. I'm not bringing that in. Don't expect it, okay? But fermentation is also in the process of making yogurt and cheese and kimchi. Mmm, kimchi, which sometimes gives me a bellyache. But we'll explore some of these other examples that are school appropriate in class, okay? So now that's done with the no oxygen business, let's talk about the oxygen business or normal cellular respiration. So if we just say cellular respiration, we mean the type with oxygen. Unless I say anaerobic or fermentation, I mean this type, okay? And guess what? The first step is super easy. First step is super easy. It's the same first step, glycolysis, which occurred in the cytoplasm, and again, was the glucose being split in half. Hiya, karate chop. And how many ATP were made? A measly 2 ATP. Kind of lame, right? Still lame. We hope that this process of aerobic respiration with oxygen will make more ATP because we as big creatures of humans need more ATP than just 2 ATP per glucose molecule. And luckily, this is a three-step process. So the next step is actually going to be in the mitochondria. And this part does require oxygen. It's called the Krebs cycle. Guess who invented it or figured it out or whatever? Krebs. Some guy named Kreb, all right? And this one makes two ATP. Still not so good, but now we're at four ATP for aerobic, which is double what we had in anaerobic, which was only two. Our last step is also in the mitochondria. Specifically, it is within the folds of the mitochondria, which is why the folds are so important. And we call this the electron transport chain. Super complicated. You can learn all the details in IB biology, but oxygen is really important it's the end part of the process here. And really, this part is awesome. It's like squeezing out all the possible ATP. And this part makes 34 ATP. Whoa! That is a lot more than just two, which we had in anaerobic. Man, that's a lot. Good thing, because we need a lot of that usable form of energy, ATP. So, let's compare and summarize. Okay? Anaerobic. Didn't have oxygen. Only made two ATP. Wah, wah. Only had one step, called glycolysis. But there were two major types, lactic acid and alcoholic fermentation. Check, do you remember which one of these was for humans? Lactic acid. Which one was for yeast? Alcohol. All right, compared to aerobic, which we know requires oxygen, which made a total of 36 to 38 ATP. It's okay that this is a range. Just bear with me. You'll learn more about the details in IB biology. And there are three steps. Glycolysis, Krebs, and electron transport chain. Whoa! Whew! And just in case you missed it in our previous notes, just remember that you have to, have to, have to memorize the, the aerobic cellular respiration equation, which is the one we're going to focus on because it's the one with oxygen. And make sure you're going to know how to write this out and be able to identify it and make sure all the parts are together where they're supposed to be. Great job, guys! Woo!